Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we have a brand new game engine. Yes, Action Game Maker was released, or is released later on today. I got an early review copy, got a chance to check it out over this weekend, and I'm going to give you my first impressions of it. Now, the, the maker part of it is the hint here. This is from the uh, RPG Maker series of game engines, so you've got RPG Maker, Visual Novel Maker, Pixel Game Maker, etc., but the most famous one by far is RPG Maker. This has been around since, I think it was 1992, uh, with the first release. It's all about making JR RPG style games super easy to create. That's the entire idea behind it. And over time, they've evolved it, uh, switched it to different programming languages behind the scenes. Even um, more recently, they decided to try this out, RPG Maker Unite, which is a version of RPG Maker that runs inside of the Unity game engine. Now, it ended up being pretty awful, to be honest. The performance was terrible. The separation between uh, the RPG Maker side of things and the Unity side of things was very clunky. Um, but they did continue to update it. So that is actually good to see. So you're seeing new uh, updated uh, even up till uh, May. So the nice thing is, even if the product was a bit of a flop, they did continue to update it over time. Well, they have another product out there called the Pixel Game Maker. Uh, Pixel Game Maker MV specifically. Uh, this came out seven years ago or six years ago, I'd say. And this one is more geared towards creating action style games. I've done full coverage of this in the past if you're interested in learning more about it. Uh, I do have hands-on video with it, but basically they are replacing Pixel Game Maker with a new game engine, and that's what we are here to cover today, and that is Action Game Maker. So it's releasing on June 16th. Uh, right now, as of this video, I think we've got about, uh, yeah, so probably 10 hours by the time I publish this, maybe nine. So later on today, this should be out and available for you to buy. Buy? How much? No idea. I got provided a key, and they don't show the pricing yet. Generally, their stuff is a little bit under 100 bucks when it launches, so I imagine they'll follow that consistently. And the big thing about this engine is it's based on another game engine. And can you guess which one? Can you? Huh? So this is the, uh, the, the new project management scene, and if you're guessing Godot, you are 100% correct. Now, this is going to be really hard for me to review because I'm actually having a lot of trouble deciding where Action Game Maker is ends or where it's customized Godot versus where it hasn't. So I'm going to showcase the primary differences. One of the primary differences, they provide a number of different sample projects to get you going. So a Metrovania style sample, uh, a top view, a benchmarking one. Uh, we've got a mouse shooter, which is one we'll look at. Uh, so talking scenes via driven by a database and a menu scene one as well. This is pretty much where you're going from. They've also got links to their forums. And one thing you're going to find, uh, there are a lot of um, Japanese uh, comments. It's a Japanese engine. Uh, you're going to find a lot of the comments within the code themselves are also Japanese. Uh, just one of those things you're definitely going to want to be aware of. Another thing is, uh, and I would have thought that this would be super critical with an engine like this, the documentation is very lacking, like very lacking. So hopefully that improves over time, but you're going to spend a lot of time trying to figure out just what the heck you were meant to do. So here is one of the example games that came with it. Uh, this is the mouse control one. I'll show you it in action in just a second. Uh, key things I want to point out, other than all these errors, this is based off of Godot 4.3. So it's basically an extension of Godot with Game Maker stuff built into it and then sold commercially. So what you're essentially buying here is uh, almost a plug-in set, but it is a custom fork of Godot. I don't know if they contribute back to the Godot project. I hope they do, because uh, you know what, otherwise it's a bit of a parasitic relationship and I can understand how people would find that a little bit disappointing. So here we are inside of uh, Action Game Maker. Let's go ahead and we'll run this scene. Now it does have some optimization issues I'm noticing. Uh, so it's a, a little chunky at times. So here we go. So enter to start. And again, mouse controls will jump around. Oh, what is jump? Oh, no, there is no. Uh, see, see the delay when I hit that. So there is definitely some caching loading in stuff. So we'll shoot that zombie, for example, until he's dead. And then come down. We have a grapple hook. You'll also notice there's water down here and a water reflection. I'll show you how that works as well. That's something that they've added. Oh. So let me just scrapple over this guy. Oh, I'm taking damage. All right, so you get an idea. This is one of the examples, kind of games that walks you through how uh, action game maker games are set up. And this is kind of where your documentation comes from. This is kind of it. So you're going to want to make sure that you... Um, you're willing to get your hands dirty, which is kind of weird because a game engine like this is meant to be like more accessible to make Godot easier. And one area they really need to focus on is providing the um, the training materials, etc., to make that a possibility. So how is this different than just normal Godot? Well, first off, if you are a Godot user and you come in and here look at the node list, which opened on my other monitor, 
I'm just bring this down here. What you're going to notice is we have a ton of AGM ones. So you see after image settings, area, attack, background, base settings, bind objects, bullet settings, child settings, connector, so on. So they've extended a ton of nodes into this. They've also made little tweaks throughout, like in the tile map editor. There's a couple of new functions available there that weren't available before. Uh, I haven't got in fully. It's actually really difficult for me uh, because I'm having trouble deciding where, again, Godot ends and where Action Game Maker begins. So if you're coming at this as a completely new project and you've never used Godot before, it'll probably be easier to learn in some ways, which sounds a little weird. All right, so you're going to notice here in this scene, for example, we have this water, this wavy water down here. This is a dynamic water thing. So you see here, this is a node that they've added. You got a various different properties available for controlling dynamic water in the scene. Now, the primary things that you're going to add, though, from the action game maker side compared to the traditional Godot experiences are the scene layer. So this is a way of handling transitions between your various different scenes. So you see here your initial scene uh, and then I don't, I don't really know the specifics of where they switch because I didn't get far enough in the levels. But you see here, these are just standard Godot levels, TSCN. This is a switching system. So you start off here, you switch over to here, to here, to here, and to here. And those switches are being controlled via these links. So you see here, tutorial to athletic. So the switching condition is the previous scene completed. And then after the switch, you can go ahead and do a color transition. Uh, you can do play different background settings and so on, and various different values there. So it's a traditional scene switching setup. There are plugins to handle doing this stuff. By the way, there is another area to mention. Compared to Godot 4.3, the only thing I've seen so far that seems to not work is GD extensions. So that's one of those things you want to be aware of. You cannot use GD extensions. You can use uh, plugins but you can't use like C++ written plugins. So GD extensions are off the table, which is definitely a bit unfortunate. So again, you've got this, trans this scene transitioning system here for, you know, basically going from scene to scene to scene to scene in your game and the conditions for handling them. The other big thing we've got is in your game world over here, you know, it's like, for example, I have this torch. This torch is being controlled by a script. Same thing here. This zombie is being controlled by the switch. And let's go ahead and take a look. So this is a, st a straightforward scene, by the way. So I could go ahead and open it up. So here you see this, the scene, there is the zombie. It is made out of, you know, um, let me go over and show it over here. So it is bone animations, uh, all that stuff set up there. Uh, and then, of course, they're using some of their own things like base settings. And what you're going to notice here is base settings has a number of predefined properties that you use in a traditional action game. Things like hit points and um, cr critical attacks, blinking, and so on. So various different basic properties from Action Game Manager are set up and handled over here. You also have this control for the various different variables that are available. So if you wanted to find the hit points for this character, you could come up here and set them, say, to 10. So if I wanted to have them lower, I could drop them down to, say, 2. Now, you're going to notice there is a comment here. And that comment is this, whatever that means. So it's one of the things you're going to run into. I think if you if you know Japanese, uh, you're going to have a lot easier time of learning this because you're going to have more access to the comments. And that was something that happened with RPG Maker and Pixel Game Maker too. It's just something to be aware of there you know, built in that market. So, uh, but yeah, you got those settings and then you've got here for uh, switching settings and so on. So a number of these um, predefined uh, properties or, or nodes in there to make working with their systems simple. And then the other big thing that they've added, so we've got the scene transition layer, we've got these various different nodes that they've added in. And then the big thing is this, and they've added visual scripting back. So this is pretty straightforward. Uh, state comes in, condition here. So uh, here or here between the, the two areas. So this is transitioning from any state to dead. This is transitioning from any state to damaged. Uh, the condition is satisfies any of, and then you've got a conditions array down here. So contact with, so this is how you can define things in the world. So contact with attack area, switch variable change. So if either of those is true, then this will be fired. All right. So that is the conditional that's defined in this little bar graph, this uh, connecting pin over here. And then it does this. Uh, by the way, I could show you here, uh, add a condition. These are the predefined conditions that are available for their visual scripting language. So you got things like uh, facing other object, target sighted, hit points go to zero, probability of something, uh, elapsed time, etc. So those are the various different conditions that you can work off of. And you've got uh, the ability to and or not them, etc. Uh, and and yeah, so that is how the conditions work. And then over here, this is the thing that will actually happen when that condition is satisfied. So here you can see the character is not dead yet. So we're going to go into this condition over here. And then what it will do is you can set it, set it to play a selected animation when that 
when damage happens, you'll play the damage animation. So this is basically a state machine system. And then over here, you've got the action settings that can change or whatever out. And then here, you've got your actions. And actions is an array of things. So for example, here, we play an audio file when this is done. So you got over here. Uh, so we play uh, an audio file, a zombie2.og. Uh, and then you've got various different properties for playing that. We wait a certain period of time, transfer to a different action. Uh, I'm not 100% certain what that one does. And then we cause a screen shake effect. So that is how things are actually run. Now, do keep in mind, at any particular time, I could go ahead. This is still Godot. So I could come in here, right click, attach a script, and I could still make, so it doesn't need to be a visual script. It could also be a GD script as well. So that is it. Quick look at the actions that are available here. So let's go ahead and add an executable action. And you can see things like move in a direction, uh, move object, push pull object, um, remove object or remove self from game, attacks, filters, scene. You can change the scenes and so on. So um, very, a lot of actions have been defined. So these are all available here. I don't know if you can create your own actions. I, I need to look into that in further detail. Unfortunately, again, the more advanced stuff, you're kind of experimenting because the documentation is very lacking. So I don't know if you can create your own action, but there are quite a bit of actions defined out of the box, just as there's a decent number of uh, conditions defined out of the boxes here. And then other than that, you basically have a traditional state machine going on. Now, the other thing that they've added in here, and I don't particularly know how to use this yet, but this is kind of fundamental to all of these uh, maker game engines, is they have a database system as well. And games need data. So that is a very common thing. So you see here, you can create a, a user database. We've got presets, things like, you know, various different attributes available, equipment. So if I wanted to create a new equipment type, so for example, I created a goat in the past, but if I want to create a new one, I come on down here, create a new one and donkey like so. So you can create simple equipment type presets. There is an audio database here of the various different sounds that are available. You've got global property variables as well. Now this is sort of overlapping with functionality that Godot already has. So I don't know why they did this this way as opposed to just going with what was available, but it is. So there is this database system available as well. And again, they have their own node structures that uh, work with those databases. So example, let's see if this guy actually has. So this stuff here, so variable settings, all these database values can be interfaced over here via these, these nodes that they have provided as well. So ladies and gentlemen, that is a very, very top level look at uh, action game maker. I'm going to look at this in more depth, play around with it a little bit more. So I'm going to be checking this one out in more detail. So if you have specific questions, do let me know in the comments down below. I'll do my best to follow up on them. Action Game Maker is going to be in a very interesting spot because it is a commercial game engine built on top of a free and open source one. So it needs to offer enough value that it's worth it to upgrade to it. Now the idea here is to like make it so that you don't need to code to use Godot to make a lot of the stuff that you would need to work with Godot kind of presets and off the box. Now another area where Gotcha Gotcha Games comes in for good or ill is they also tend to release a ton of DLC, pre-made uh, modules, etc., to work with their engines. And that's one of those areas where Godot is still lacking, the lack of an asset store, etc. So it'd be interesting to see what kind of an ecosystem film forms up around Action Game Maker. So if you're interested in learning more, please do let me know. Would you like to see me do like a bit of a getting started tutorial with this one? That is a possibility going forward. Now, I know this is definitely not going to be for everyone. And a lot of people that are like more advanced with Godot are going to probably look at this and go, why would I buy this? I could just do this with X, Y, and Z plugins, or I could just create this or create that. I don't think you're the target demographic. I think this is more about making Godot easier to use. But the flip side is, if they're going to have that visual scripting and those state managements and those prefabs and all that, they also need to have the documentation to go with it. And if you're wondering day one, nah, this is a tricky engine to work with because you're kind of fumbling around with how to work with things. I'm sure they'll improve that over time, but that's one of those things you're going to want to know going into it. The documentation is definitely a bit lacking, although it does come with a ton of tutorials to get you up and going. So ladies and gentlemen, Action Game Maker, let me know what you think. Comments down below. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.